Bible time with Larry. I am Larry, and this is my lovely wife Pam. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Not that you need me to tell you this. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I think you know what to do by now. I don't, but at mm-hmm. least you might. Okay, so this is our what fourth, fourth episode on marriage. It is. And we thought we'd be done by now, but hey, oh, a couple things before we get started. You will notice the background. This is not a green screen. Mm-hmm. This is we are actually in our living room. We don't have our studio set up. We thought we would, but we ended up taking a trip to Virginia since the last recording. And we just got back Sunday morning at like four thirty in the morning. And this so, is Monday. And this is Monday. We're recording this. And it will go out Thursday anyway. Not that you need to know that or care, but just thought we'd tell you. Mm-hmm. And another exciting thing. If you see the table that all this is setting on, I know it's kind of hard to tell by the angle of the camera, but this is the table I made. This is our dining room table. It's so pretty. Yeah. So it's it very silky. Anyway, so yeah, we're in our living room. This is our fireplace. It's actually a real wood fireplace. We thought about doing a fire, but it's a little warm tonight, and it would be really hot on our backs, <laughs> so... We nixed that idea. We did. And, and you wouldn't be able to see it anyway, so it didn't matter. And some people are listening on a podcast or something, so they're not going to be able to see it You're anyway. You're not going to see it anyway. So, yeah, so it doesn't matter. We're sitting in front of our fireplace, people, for those yeah. of you listening. Glad <laughs> glad you're there. Yeah. And hopefully, for now on, no more green screen. It just... Yeah. Some people do a, a good job with a green screen. Yeah. Uh, we... Not so much. We're, we're way too new. Anyway. At it. All right, so you had a couple of questions to start off with, right? I thought you were going to do the questions. All right, I'll do the questions. <laughs> All righty. So our question for you is, what does romance mean to you, and where is it mentioned in the Bible? Good question. Something to think about. We're going to talk about those things, because we actually did some polls. We talked. We asked couples that we know what they thought. We got... Various answers, would you say? Yeah, we we got into some good conversations. Yeah, a lot of them seem to be similar. Like when we mentioned where is it found in the Bible, everybody went to where? Song of Solomon first and foremost, but then there were there were a lot of other things that came up. Yeah, there's a few there. Uh, So yeah, and I think people oftentimes get passion confused with romance. That did happen. We actually looked at the definition of romance and where it comes from this is kind of i i was i thought it was really interesting um but like one one thing we got about some of the uh, the poll answers you want to talk about <laughs> it's some really of cute <laughs> well my favorite yeah go ahead <laughs> my favorite was and i guess this wasn't really a poll as much as it was conversations right. yeah it's true it's good so point. i'm gonna yeah. mention a name in polls you don't mention names but um, our son-in-law, our new son-in-law, Jeremiah, in Virginia, he, he the first thing that came to his mind was the, the Disney movie, Lady and the Tramp, with the two dogs eating the spaghetti, and they got yeah, the one noodle, and <laughs> they ended up in a kiss position, I guess, because they were eating the one noodle right. all together. And then he immediately started humming a song. <laughs> You'll never find. Yeah, that one. He, he started humming it. Oh, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. And that, and he starts humming it. And then he's like, what is that song? Yeah. And so then we tried to pull out the app on the iPhone, find find the song by humming wah, it or something. Wah, wah. <laughs> so we I can't did. Do it very well, and but. it's uh, You'll Never Find by, who is it? Lou Rawls. Yeah, something like that. It was, it was kind of a fun song. I, I know I've heard it in the past, but yeah. it's not really in my my feed. <laughs> Uh, another one they uh, mentioned uh, a candlelight dinner right walks on the beach sure that sounds romantic and uh, then we had in the bible another bible story was ruth and boaz how'd you feel about that one uh i don't necessarily when i when you compare it with the definition of romance Mm -hmm. i don't think it fits doesn't fit doesn't fit but i would think i mean we we just kind of kept going over and over and over with all the couples and in the bible and I I feel like that kind of gets the closest to what yeah to what we have created romance to be in our minds. Right, because here's the problem with the romance. Before we get into the definition, 
is we tend to think of it as because we've been conditioned through movies and books of what romance is. It's the the and it does that thing that idea does fit with the definition. Would you would you agree? Yes. It's this. Um, like you think of the movies, like the candlelight dinners, the walk on the beaches, and, and I'm not saying those things are bad. Um, and we should do those things. Those are we enjoy. We probably should. You and I should probably do anything romantic. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, <laughs> if I mean, if we're for romance, and, and when you said we're going to talk about romance, I was like, oh boy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're the least romantic couple I know. You're probably right. <laughs> I mean, what do we have? Light a candle once a year or something? I, uh, yeah, I really don't. I really don't think we're just both very practical and it, logistical. Right now, we, now we did used to do walks on the beach because, because we live near the beach. Yeah, we, it's and, a lot easier when you live near the beach. <laughs> and I do love that. And yes, I yeah. would in our modern day version of what we think romance is. I would say yes, that is that can be anyway romantic. Right. Um, to me, it's very soothing, and I just love the. The waves and everything but now another thing about romance is and it, this is like in the movies you always see the movie you know where they at the end the couple gets together they kiss like mike always says in the hallmark <laughs> movie they kiss under a, in a gazebo and it's snowing outside that's how hallmark ends their movies <laughs> and we think of the he's not wrong yeah the have the happily ever after but you don't know all you see is that ending scene where either you know they kiss under the in the gazebo i say under but they kiss in the gazebo or they meet up on the beach or something like that what we tend to think of as romantic and then that's it we don't see the rest of it we don't see them living the day-to-day real life stuff where because honestly you can't live in that because our whatever your concept of romance is, it's a it's a lot of emotional. Um, what am I trying to say? A lot of emotion with it. Yeah, someone someone said that when we were in our conversations. I think it was, uh, I think it was actually Jeremiah's mom in Virginia, and I thought that it made a lot of sense. You said it right. before too. How we are not physiologically is that? Yeah, we're not capable. It would be continuing in <laughs> exhausting. We would wear ourselves out, really, because the it's, honeymoon state, right? I guess. And that's how a, yeah. speaking speaking code yeah. for family. Friendly. I mean, the honeymoon is great, and it should be. I, it, mm. It's that should be a wonderful time and a special time. But you can't live in that. That's not real life. That that is a fantasy in in a, some ways. Yeah. So now, let's before we go on any further, let's get in. To the definition of romance and okay. what it means. I don't know how much of that you want me to read, but we have the 1828 Webster Dictionary definition of romance. A fabulous relation or story of adventures and incidents designed for the entertainment of readers. A tale of extraordinary adventures, fictitious and often extravagant. Usually a tale of love or war. Subjects interesting, the... What subjects interesting the sensibilities of the heart? What are they saying there? Subjects? Subjects interesting to the sensibilities. Of, yeah. Oh, to the others. Yeah, there's It's to be missing a two. the yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. A few little words makes it that different. That was a copy and paste. That wasn't me. <laughs> subjects interesting to the sensibilities of the heart or the passions of wonder and curiosity. Romance differs from the novel as it treats of great actions and extraordinary adventures. That is according to the Welch sig- signific- signification. Signification. I should have read These this are, before. <laughs> again, this is 1828, 1828. So they spoke a little different. But I like the 1828 because it is a little more exact. It's wordy, but it's more exact. It is wordy, but it is, it's kind of an alien, isn't it? It vaults or soars beyond the limits of fact and real life and often of probability. Right. So that's the hmm. romance. It's, we talk about romance. We tend to think of romance as love. But you th- we you, we actually use the word in our modern times in, in other ways, like they romanticize war. In other words, you're making war more glorious than what it actually is. This great grand adventure that you're going to go out and conquer your foes and defeat your enemies. And it's, it's this wonderful grand adventure. Well, actually, war is not that at all. It's 
it's devastating it's horrible it's wretched you know mm-hmm. so but but we romanticize it to make it more glorious more well honestly if you want to go to war you got to make it attractive to somebody to get soldiers to go fight for you mm. or with you it's a good point are. but yeah when it comes to marriage and romance these are things that we see in the movies and it's something that's beyond what's real we make it into something that it's not now that is different in my mind you may not think so but hey and if you think it's some, if we're wrong on this please let write it in the comment and let us know because but i think or that email we have now oh that's right what is that email bible time with larry at gmail.com there you go. Good that's job. tricky yeah it's a tough <laughs> one to remember but what i was saying was that the idea of romance i think is different than passion yeah there were a lot of i think there was some confusion with passion and romance in our conversations right and i would say the book of Song of Solomon may have, you might tend to think of romance, but I find it more passionate, more passionate. Yeah, someone said, who was it that said, um, I don't know, how he was preparing and all that, that that was the romantic part of wooing and maybe. Yeah, some of the language that's used, especially in Song of Solomon, it's more of a um, romantic type language. That we call it more poetic, and I find it more passionate. Are you looking up the definition of passion? I am. We didn't do that one. Yeah, we forgot about for the that. eighteen twenty eight. Do you want it eighteen twenty eight or modern day? Uh, do the eighteen twenty eight. Why not? Just to compare it with romance. All righty. Just a side note. I just noticed looking on the camera. This is something I know. This is totally off subject. I just noticed it, but <laughs> with this lighting and stuff, it makes my hair look really white. <laughs> oh, does it really? <laughs> yeah. That's but. funny. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. And we have all these little paraphernalia things back here. Yeah, we're going to explain all this in a little bit. In a They're few probably minutes, like, oh, that's right. what they keep on their mantle. Yeah, we don't normally keep all that <laughs> stuff up there. That's, but there's a there's purpose for that. We're going to get to that. Uh, that's funny. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the right one. Well, just give us one. Okay, so this is for um, the definition of passion. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. The feeling of the mind or the sensible effect of impression. Excitement. Uh, perturbation being perturbed or agitation <laughs> of mind as desire fear hope joy grief love hatred the eloquence of the orator is employed to move the passions i don't know if that's 1828 no but there it is right oh here it is passion 1828 webster's dictionary the impression or effect of an external agent upon a body, that which is suffered or received. A body at rest affords us no idea of any active power to move. And when set in motion, it is rather a passion than an action in it. Susceptibly of impressions from external agents. The differences of moldable and not moldable, etc., and many other passions of matter are plebeian nations which one number four yeah that's what you just read number four oh, okay that's what i read yeah. first up there well anyway so it is something passion encompasses more than just love it does say you know, love number yeah. seven but it, it's broader than that and it's something that you are when you say they're they're passionate about their work we think of somebody who puts their all into it mm-hmm. when you bring passion into your marriage you bring your all into it you have it yeah, and it's it doesn't have to relate just to love or marriage. Right, and if you think about, if you go back to the beginning, we talked about in this series, series of marriage and how there is that, I call it a utilitarian aspect of marriage that you see that in the Bible, but it's not, I don't think that's what God intended. I think what God intended is a marriage to be full of passion full of love, trust, a mutual um, on both parts. Would you, I don't know if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and I don't know if, if um, you're trying to say passion, just like the one kind of passion wink that we would talk in code about. But, uh, yeah. but passion for life, passion for right. um, God's glory, passion for our ministry, passion for... 
Well, I would say, yeah, a passion. Leading souls to Christ. Right, a passion that you both work towards together in yes. something in life. You grow together. You, you, you invest your life into your marriage, into each other. But that other kind of passion is important, too, the wink stuff, because... Well, yeah, that you know, is, you if you know, you know, <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you gotta keep it fresh. You know what we say before spoil each other. Right. And that's, and that is a, well, to have passion in that area is extremely important as well. It is. And you can romance that. You can have romance in that area, make it more adventurous. Or you can know. romanticize it. Right. If it's war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Probably yeah. somewhere inappropriate, so let's... But if you think of romance, it's more sub, It's more feeling-based, more emotional, mm-hmm. something that's not real. But we need, in your marriage, you need something that's solid, something concrete to build on. Not to say that you can't have times where there's passion and romance, however you want to define it, but you have to build on something that's more solid than that. Because think about yeah. your emotions... They're fleeting. They change all the time, and they can change in an instant. So you don't want to build a relationship as marriage on feelings, right? Or on you know a feeling of romance or feeling of even a feeling of love. Love is not necessarily a feeling. We define it as that, but it's more than that. So you need something stronger, something deeper. And I would say that foundation needs to be Christ. And, Absolutely. And based on the scriptures, on, on the Bible itself. So Yeah. And sadly, Hollywood has really skewed and marred our definition of a lot of oh, things. I, and yeah, certainly movie. romance and passion are in yeah. those categories. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at, well, you like some of those Hallmark movies. and Occasionally. Yeah. There, <laughs> occasionally there's a good one. My, <laughs> my favorite one so far that I didn't watch, I was just reading the synopsis, said something like, um, another one of those <laughs> yeah, smushy, no. kissy, or predictable. Um, what else did it say? Something along those lines. And the kiss under the, in the gazebo at the end. Blah, blah, blah. Something like that. It, it literally said that in the synopsis. And I was like, someone's going to get fired. <laughs> or, or they were quitting and didn't. <laughs> or they were get, quitting. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm going to give my real opinion that on That was the literal synopsis yeah. that I was reading. <laughs> But no, I mean, and those things are, I guess, and I don't like that type of movie, but in a, in a sense, I guess I could see where it's fun every once in a while. I mean, you think of like an action adventure movie that romanticizes action and adventure because that stuff isn't real. If some of these fight scenes that you see in some of these movies actually happen in real life, somebody would be dead. Right. Real quick. Yeah, that doesn't have. It's not real life. It, we are romanticizing those things, and so mm-hmm. even in guy movies, it's not real. It's it so you're is. saying there's romance in guy movies, even? Well, yeah, but it's in a different way. Huh? Yeah, in a different way. Yeah, but anyway, but I would say as far as marriage is concerned, if you want to define romance in a modern sense. Okay, but realize, and, I, and I'm going to speak to the ladies on this. So you might be saying, well, you you don't know what you're talking about. Are you speaking? You shouldn't be talking on the subject. Anyway, um, that's not real life. And don't expect your husband to be that way all the time. That's unrealistic. You're yeah, putting and don't un- try to make him be a, a Hollywood character. Right. That's that is, not real. You know, that's an unrealistic expectation. Now I'm going to speak to the guys. And to myself, maybe have a little bit of that every once in a while. It's okay. Would you say? I would. And I I would also venture to say there's some guys out there saying, hey, I'm the most romantic one in this partnership. Right. Yeah, that's true. So. So, girls, maybe you need to <laughs> step your, right. your game up a little bit more. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe her guy wouldn't want... What? How do you? How do you help somebody show more passion or be more romantic? I guess if we're trying to, if we're if we're even trying to encourage people to be romantic, now that we've kind of shot down that whole. <laughs> <laughs> how would you do that? Well, the, that's a, the that's modern a good day version of that is not. There's nothing biblical there to to bounce off of. To say yes, you need more romance. You need more passion in your marriage. I don't. I don't really 
think that's what we need. No, our I, whole premise was kind of shot down as we started did, studying yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like, uh, what are we going to talk about now? No, but there is a point where, and it, it goes back to being selfish. You need to give of yourself for your spouse and whatever means that is, whether it's, if you're a guy, if it means giving up a weekend of watching football or going on a hunting trip, going fishing, something, whatever, or doing the dishes for your wife or cooking dinner or taking care of the kids, take the kids out for a day, whatever, to give of yourself for your spouse to give up something yeah, and, and not be selfish and not expect because look, think of it this way as a husband you were if you go out and work all day whatever your job is and stuff when you're done you go home and your job's done but for your wife if especially a young couple when you got young kids she can't just leave it's not like you come home and she says okay my shift is over i'm going home she's home yeah she she doesn't <laughs> clock out she doesn't clock out and then you come home and you put a little more expectations on your wife. Well, that's not fair. That, that's unrealistic. So how about when you get home, realize, oh, my wife has been working all day just like I have. Maybe she needs a break. So maybe I can do some things and give her a break. That's, that doesn't sound romantic in a modern sense. But I would say that would be much more appreciative than if you maybe brought flowers. Now, maybe your wife doesn't care and the flowers would be nice. But I used to bring flowers every once in a while. I'd do it sporadically, but yeah, I haven't in a while. I used to just, on a whim, just get flowers and bring them home. I guess I wasn't. I didn't act as excited as I should have. <laughs> Keep getting more flowers. <laughs> right. Now, I would say for the wife, on the other hand, she could do something for her husband, whether make a special meal or something or have just have a meal time with just the two of you. Mm -hmm. Like you feed the kids early before your husband gets home and then the two of you can sit down and have a nice meal together. Yeah. How do you feel about researching the other's love language and see if maybe you could feed into that? That gets into the more. question last time on the personality <laughs> profiles. Yeah. I, I think that's, it's not a bad idea. For sure, it helps you again, like the personality profiles, gives you a better understanding of how somebody thinks. And I think why it gives think direction them. too. Right, it does. Like, how can I spoil you? Well, well I mean, rubbing your back, yeah, that's not really going to do it for you. Well, that would do it for me. Right. That's. But if I, you know, made you food or made your tea or did something for you, maybe that speaks to you more. Is that romantic? A, I wouldn't say it is in the definition of it, but it is. Now, by the way, if you hear some moaning, <laughs> that's our dog. For a puppy here. It's not and really a puppy. But. <laughs> but but no, I think uh, the love language and, and the personality profiles, it, it's a help. Like, for example. I think so. I'm not big on touch, but you are. Mm -hmm. I like what would be acts of service, as yes. they called it. And quality time. Yeah, I I like those things, and it, it for a while there is like, well, I'm doing all these things, and it's not meaning anything to you. I'm like, well, wait a minute, I'm doing, I'm cooking dinner, I'll clean the dishes, but all you wanted was me to rub your back, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, that, why? You know, I did I didn't understand, but now that I understand, well, I. Don't do it as much as I should, but that's a different story. <laughs> that's, I try. I try. You do. You do a good job. But, all right. Um, now, something else you uh, what were, you mentioned about the love language. And the, oh, how, how to. So, I think those are some good steps on. Another important thing, and this goes back to the episode on conflict resolution. If there is a conflict, obviously passion and romance is going to not be there because you got to resolve the conflict first and in order to resolve the conflict you somebody's got to be willing to give and yield mm -hmm. so somebody's got to make that first step to say okay i'm 
I, don't, I may have misspoken or whatever. Somebody's got to make that first step to say I'm sorry. And if neither one of you are willing to do that, then uh, you're not going to have any passion or romance. Mm. That ain't going to happen. So resolve the conflict first and work on that. And then you can work on having passion. And if you if you do have the conflict and you have the resolution, you might have some passion <laughs> later. So... <laughs> If you get what I'm talking about. Anyway. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, the other thing, this is something I just, ma- I talked about my white hair because when we got married, I had black hair. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that I was do. so long ago. I'm not that old. <laughs> but yes, I do. As you can tell, it's no longer black. That is the thing about time. Time takes its toll on everybody that that strapping young man you married well, he might turn fat and bald as he gets older, just saying. Or he might turn fat and gray hair. But that's what time does. Or you get wrinkly and, you, you know, you just, you get old. You lose, your, the Bible even says, what is it, uh, in Ecclesiastes, uh, beauty is vain, or how does it go? That certainly sounds right. You can look it up. I, <laughs> I just thought of that. Or The um, beauty is fleeting. Yeah, it, it is. Beauty fades. I can't remember. It, your beauty fades. It just happens. It's you, And you see these women, especially that they go get the surgeries and Botox, all that other stuff, and they apply more makeup to try to hang on to that youthfulness. It ain't working. Just accept the fact you're getting older. We all do. And it happens. So that beauty is going to fade. But that's... The, so if your relationship is built on that, those physical things, it's a shaky foundation. It ain't going to last. So build it on something that will last. What's that? That's Christ. Amen. All righty. Yeah. So I think that's, I don't know, I think that's pretty good on romance, huh? I guess. Like how do we, how do we bring that back to anything that might glorify God? Well, I think the okay. So that's a that is a good point. Thank I didn't you. Think about that. Yeah, um, I would say the point of that is to as because God intended a husband and wife to become one, mm-hmm. and the more that you build that towards that build towards that goal, you will glorify God. And think about this is something that we don't really think about, but you re- that's a good point you raise. We are to be lights to the world as Christians. We are the example of Christ. And the church is compared to the bride of Christ. <clears throat> so if we are to be an example in our marriage, we need to be like Christ in the church. Mm-hmm. And that uh, in church yesterday, yeah, we um, Mike brought up a cup about a couple that he knows that they're is, they're getting divorced. What do you say? In the next month or so, their mm-hmm. the divorce will be finalized. Mm-hmm. I think so. And if you look at statistics, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or non-Christian. I'm going to break these things if I don't. <laughs> it, the the divorce rate is about the same, and that is sad. That how, what does the world think when they look at a supposed Christian supposed Christian couple, and they're having the same struggles as they are? What is the appeal? They're like, well, there, there's no difference. Mm-hmm. What do I need to be a Christian? I can fight with my wife just as much as they are, and I don't need to be a Christian. So in order for us to be that example and to glorify God, we should have that marriage where people look at us and say, wow, they are different. That's a different family. I want that kind of family. I want that relationship. I want that type of marriage how do i get it Mm -hmm. so i think that is a way that we can yeah good answer well thank you (laughs) i thought it was pretty good too. keep it on track hopefully something in any of these four talks means something to someone and is helpful yeah i you you have a note there too also we talked about passion and stuff in the king james bible it talks about to know Mm -hmm. well most i'd say Pretty much a big majority of the time when it uses that phrase, that is an intimate knowledge. 
that to know somebody that's an intimate way of putting it and when you know and when you know you know you know but so that's you might get there through romance of some sort or passion but it's that intimate knowledge that you get to know the other person and it's a it's a marriage becomes a, a union of not just the physical but i would say in your soul your soul's intertwined hmm. mm-hmm. and that's why it's hard to separate and that's why when adam said for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one well, once they become one it's hard it's, it should be impossible to separate yeah so that's why it's important for Christians, especially if you're going to name your, the name of Christ, your marriage should reflect that. I'm yeah. not saying it's going to be perfect or you're not going to have conflict. That's not what I'm saying, and that's unrealistic in itself. But I'm saying in the midst of that, you can still have love and passion. Mm-hmm. And you can be an example to say, okay, well, yeah, we had a conflict, but this is, we're not living in that we resolved it we have mm-hmm. restoration and conflict is definitely a wedge or a barrier to intimacy absolutely and intimacy is a deeper knowledge of the other and like you said it just it, you know your relationship gets deeper if you let it yeah and um it doesn't have to just run on romance or passion it right. really can have what did you say? Depth of meaning. Depth. Yeah. True love. Yeah. True love. <laughs> True love. Do we go there again? Yeah. <laughs> Do we wear that one out yet? <laughs> yeah. The Princess Bride quotes. Yes, now right. there's a romantic there, there's movie. A, that's a, it's action, <laughs> adventure, romance. It's all that comedy. Uh, anyway. Well, I no. think Hollywood did a good job on that one. I'm just going to say. Well, yeah. They get it right a couple times. Yeah. A few times. But um, classic. Anyway. So, I think that's a good ending. I mean, okay. This. Is that I a good? You have another. Is that a good sum it up? I mean, we could talk on marriage and. Well, uh, just real quick, I, I just thought of something. Forever. Time, because we mentioned, you know, time can. The effects of times, you can see it, it wears things down. We get old, we get wrinkly, all that. But time in your marriage can either separate you you if you start off it's like on an angle if you start off like a one percent angle when you stretch that out over 10 miles that one percent becomes a big gap at the end of the 10 miles Mm -hmm. and just like in marriage you have one little conflict that is left unresolved over time that thing will grow so time will either separate you or it will bring you together yeah. So it's just a matter of what what you choose to do. Mm-hmm. So, and it's worth working through. Yeah. And not just burying it up. Absolutely. And like I say, never mind. I'm just that's a bad. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're gonna well, so real no sponsor again this week because we were away and didn't have time to to work on that get any sponsors. But I do want to say the RMO interview we did do that with elliot and his wife tiana is that how you say it tiana tiana but there were some technical difficulties that we didn't realize until later so we don't have that is that correct yeah Yeah. we we lost first of all we lost their feed right and recovered it and then our part got erased yeah so now there's nothing yeah so when you do things like this to me, you have to record things at two separate times, and then you join them together in the in editing phase. So one got lost in the computer somehow, and then... Recovered. Recovered, and then our our side was videotaped and recorded on a separate device, and it got erased. <laughs> So, <laughs> and that one's really not recoverable. And that, yeah, it's gone. That got uh, recorded over. So we don't have the RMO interview, but hopefully we can do it again. It's very because sad. I really like you guys to meet yeah. Elliot. And it, and if you get a Tiana, chance, they're great people. Go look it up. I don't remember the website. It's uh, onwardforchrist.org. Onward for 
I don't know if it's org or dot com. Yeah, or you can just do a Google search for Onward for Christ. And they should have a thing for the Rocky Mountain Outreach. Yep, they will. Go check it out because it is a great, they do a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not your typical mission trip. They're not painting some house for the third time or whatever. They're actually going out and doing evangelism. And it is pretty intense. Yeah. So check that out. But So hopefully in the future we can get the interview and... Or not that one, just do another one and have you guys meet them. So, all right. Now, we're going to move on to the Let's Get Personal. Okay. And we're going to explain the stuff behind us. For those of you watching. Our 32nd wedding anniversary will be... Thursday. Thursday, December 21st. Three days from now. Yeah. 32 years. That's awesome, isn't it? 32 years. It's amazing. And in that time, what would you say the, we've only like went away once on our anniversary. <sighs> well, actually that's not true. Because hmm. there were a few trips when we didn't have ch- kids that we would drive to your aunt's house in Monroe, Louisiana. <laughs> we go, because <laughs> I was teaching at the time. And so I get break off Christmas. So we would go up. In our anniversary, with the reason why we got married in December, I was in college. We were going to wait till May, but then I had to do a field study class, and we decided. And Pam wanted to go, so it, we decided it would be much easier and better for us if we went as a married couple rather than a single couple. Indeed, and it was hiking the Grand Canyon, so I was not going to pack my own tent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't really pack anything. Smart out, girl, right? <laughs> huh? Exactly. <laughs> um, so during the uh, Christmas break and my senior year, that's when we got married. That was December 21st, 1991. Now, so let me explain this cookbook. And I don't know if you can see the... Hold on a second. This little guy here is a little measuring. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> These are the, I think as far as I know, the only two things we have left that were wedding gifts. I really think so. Everything yeah. else was broken or passed on or used. Or, but hey, right. 32 years. Look at that puppy. That I know pretty it. good. You can still read all the writing. It's got the little asses. Pillsbury Doughboy on the front. And we still use the cookbook. It's kind and of And we can still now, read. We can even read the the stuff with our old eyes there's one little chip right here no yep right there tiny 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 but hey that's pretty good right that's probably the pillsbury doughboy is probably still on there because we didn't have a dishwasher for most of this marriage right right yeah uh, i yeah. think that's not true because we had a dishwasher for like no no we didn't we didn't have it hooked up in the last house until we moved <laughs> right yeah, that's true we didn't <laughs> so yeah the betty crock cookbook that Betty Crocker Betty Crocker cookbook. cookbook yep came in handy that was a great gift and uh, all these other little things are things we brought into the marriage our, our own personal things this is a cute little mirror hand mirror my mom got it's from England we'll turn it around so it's a mirror yep see there and that cute little mirror so that's what I had. I from was going to say it has a good look, a picture of a good looking <laughs> good guy. Looking guy. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> and here's your uh, your little baby book. So Larry came see. in with that. Yeah, these are things that we brought into our marriage. Let's see if this. And is here a, are my little geese from my grandmother's curio cabinet. Did your grandmother have a little curio cabinet? Hers had uh, hers had glass doors so that it was easier to keep the dust down. Yeah, my mom didn't keep up with this. It only has one page filled out. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Is I don't know what that is. <laughs> Computer generation caricature of you. Yeah, I don't know where that well, came Well, that from, came with you, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff, it just, it's old. Wait, you have, a, let's see, I think these are your, your award certificates from school. Hey, here's my little baton, my baton oh. outfit when I twirled baton. <laughs> okay, so I was in I was in uh, first grade. A lot of people are not going to know what this is, and I don't know if this is going to show. Oh, up on what is that? Do you know what that is? Oh my goodness, that's a bowling 
The bowling ticket. Or yeah, that's the, how you used to keep score at the bowling alley. <laughs> I think it's upside down. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, you had to actually you put it on an overhead projector. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. This was really fun to dig through all this stuff. I have, um, what do I have here? I have all of these national youth sports program. Did y'all do any of that where uh, you had to do, what was it, like uh, push-ups, the presidential thing? Yeah we, yeah, we used to have a field day at the end of the year. Yeah, you had to do so many pull-ups yeah. and push-ups and, ooh, your grades? look what? at all those A's. What does the F mean on We're this? not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I kept my, I'm not going to show that. There are <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of the better report cards. I'm going to find one of them. <laughs> hey, I got straight A's in eighth grade. Let's see. These are funny report cards. I got straight like, A's in kindergarten. Look at this little computer generation stuff or generated stuff where there's little uh, yeah, the pokey printer. tabs yeah. on the edges. Hey, look at all those A's, honey. Da, 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 da. I even got an A in lunch. <laughs> that's wow, great. Look that's at that. Awesome. That's still, anyway. We have all these. What else now, what do we have the up there? Are the ducks here? Are they, are they ducks I, or geese? I already said something about oh, you that. Did? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I missed it. My cute little geese from oh, my... Oh, look. You did? My grandmother's curio did cabinet. Well school. So honor roll. Honor roll. See? From Dixie Hollins High School. Dixie Hollins High School. St. Petersburg, Florida. Anyone else go there? And let's see. I have kitty cats up there that oh, yeah. oh. were also from my grandmother's curio cabinet. Oh, yeah. Show your donkey. Larry had a little stuffed donkey. That was his little buddy when he okay, was. Okay, this is kind of funny. This, yeah, baby. I got this for I think Christmas, <laughs> if I remember. I I think I may have been three or four. Aww. I don't remember. Look at it this was, it, one ear, somewhere around there. No ear. I I actually have the other ear somewhere, and it I, actually still works. I've sewn it, it on. <laughs> I've sewn that ear on a lot because we let our kids, we let our kids play with it. <gasps> Can you hear that? Oh, and this wallet. This was a graduation present. It still from, works, guys. From a friend of mine. <laughs> it's actually very expensive. I had it. Well, that was. I graduated in 1988. Oh, yeah. I wondered if you still had it. Cool. It's been through. I don't use it anymore, but. Hey, that's not bad. It looks like a Dockers. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> had that forever. I don't know why I kept it, but that's funny. You got any hidden pockets? With I know. I look for money. Cash in, no there? Money in there? Oh, no money in there. Of course what, not. What? If you look in your wallet, you'll find my money. In uh, there. Do you have the uh, the bumper sticker that says yeah. "Driver carries no Let cash"? See here. What else? Married married with children carries no cash. Oh, it's still playing. Isn't that great? All of our kids went. Um, had a nap or two, I'm sure, with Donkey, and then they pulled the ear off again. This hey, this a, one's about to come off. This is for you, from you. Your mom gave you this, right? Yep. A bunch of, it's like a little jewelry my box. My shell from, box shell. from, yep, don't show all my money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one, that one is an oldie from when I was a kid. Oh, wait, look, here's my, my uh, high school class ring. Yep. Still wow. have, still have that thing. Yeah. Did I tell you I graduated at the top of my class? Yeah, we already heard all that. I'm we don't, make we don't, myself feel smart. We don't want to hear you brag again about how you graduated top of your class and you were the only one in that class. I was the only one. Oh, yeah, my little earrings. I have these little porcelain earrings. The roses are porcelain anyway. So that's it. I had some jewelry. Oh, yeah, look at this thing. Yeah, this is this was before we had kids, right? Or were, were we married? Did you got that? Or, no, it was right before. I do not think we were married yet. Yeah, yeah. you found it at... At like, my job. <laughs> and, and we kept it. It's so cute. Did we cute. ever let our kids play with it? I wish we had a way to zoom in. Isn't that cute? And people people listening aren't going to be able to hear this, but it's a cute little wooden rattle. It looks like, what What would you call that? Where they do the beads in their hair? Not cornrows, but they put a bunch of beads in their hair. Anyway, we let our kids play with it. Okay. It's very cute. What else is up there? Oh, the clown thing. Can you reach the clown? I don't really love the clown. I can't reach it. Okay. But the clown is just a little porcelain doll thing, if anybody can see that up there. And my brother won it for me playing skee ball. And it was just it's just a great memory for me because we were finally getting along. Because oh, we didn't yeah. get along for a long time. <laughs> but that's why I keep it. I'm not partial to clowns or whatever. Oh, and there are my Raggedy Ann and oh, yeah, Andy dolls. Raggedy Ann and Andy. I, those I can't, definitely can't reach. But. Yep. Oh, and then back to my brother. We get along great now, and I really appreciate that. So I'm I'm glad. Yeah, it's kind of fun. That we do. These are some of the things we found as we moved and got 
out of the boxes finally and yeah it's kind of interesting how we you know you can hold on to things we don't hold on to a lot of things we don't which is i'm surprised when we started looking we were like we don't have much i'm sure and i was really surprised we found this much because we are definitely not keep type people so we've given to kids and i think we have the videotape from our wedding oh see i did not find that when i went through stuff but and we have our wedding album oh yeah so i didn't find that either but i'm sure it's it's in in there somewhere somewhere. yeah it's in there somewhere i I saw it yeah but anyway yeah that so you know marriage is as i said we started out this series and we're kind of getting short on time here but we started out with the like i said the utilitarian side of marriage and the kind of contractual legal binding side that's not really love or passion or any of that. That's just kind of cut and dry. But you need that aspect. You need marriage has to be a binding contract in a sense to say, okay, I am going to. And it used to be. I don't think they do this anymore with the marriage vows. Was that they, you would vow to forsake all others and give yourself to the one person. Mm-hmm. And now, and we have these memorabilia to remind us of one, the life that we had before each other, and then the life that we've built together mm-hmm. through these years. And yeah. it, it hasn't been smooth. It hasn't been, you know, there's been, it hasn't been the glorious forever after. I mean, there's been times with that, that but that's real life. It, there's been bumps in the road, been a few pitfalls. We've taken a few turns, or wrong turns, I guess. Um, made it, had to make some U turns, things like that. That's real life, but we did it together, and we've stayed together. and And I would say our marriage is strong and stronger than what it has been. And I would say this is the thing about love: is I th- I would I thought that when we got married, I'd say, yeah, I love you. And I, and I thought I knew what that meant. And 10 years go by and I'm like, oh, now I understand what that means. That when I say I love my wife, I understand what that means. But now looking back, I'm like, well, I didn't really understand what it meant. But now I do. Hmm. You know, and I, I hope in 30 years from now, I will look back and say, you know, I really didn't understand it, but now I do. You know, so it's a growing thing. It's something that continues to grow or it should at, at, through your lifetime together and you can build it and these things are good to hold on to little it doesn't have to be a lot it could be little things like you said the clown you have the clown because it's a memory and we see this in the old testament too where there's oftentimes an event happens and they build an altar and they leave it there and they name it so that when they come back by there again they see it and they say oh yeah i remember that that's why this is here if you remember when the Israelites crossed the Jordan River with Joshua, and when they cro- everybody crossed, they built an altar, altar there out of stones, and they left it as a memorial to say, when you come back by here and you see this, you're going to say, oh, yeah, our ancestors crossed. This is where they crossed, and it's a remembrance. So these are some things in our lives, personal things, that don't really mean anything really to anybody else, but they have a deep meaning for us and that we can look and say, oh, yeah, I remember I remember that day, and it's okay. And I think that's kind of passionate, romantic in a sense, to go look through back, you know, through some of these things. And, and then you remember, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that time. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. So. That's good. You got any other final closing thoughts? I did, and I lost them. Mm. Maybe I am getting old. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking we didn't say anything about the quilts. Because I have a quilt from my grandmother. Oh. Yeah. The Sunbonnet Sioux quilt. It just might be hard to show because it was the the quilt I would nap on at my grandmother's house. And there are all these little Sunbonnet Sioux ladies. And each one has a different, a little different dress. And this is a, sad for the people on the podcast because they, they won't see it. But so cute. Anyway. And then the blanket I had on my bed. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got married. 
I still have it. Boy, it has seen better days. It's mostly the blanket that gets used for wrapping up something that we need to haul now that we does. don't want to. We used it for a long time. We did. Yeah. Yeah, but that we don't want to break or right. something like that. So I don't know. I did have a thought where you were. Anyway, when you were talking, a deeper thought, but if it comes oh, to me, good. maybe I will we'll edit start it in. Up yeah. <laughs> <So>. Start over. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know what it was. Oh, okay. Go it ahead. was um, what we were reading in church yesterday, what Mike Charleston read about um, husbands, how they're supposed to love their wives. Gulp. Yeah. That's, uh, that's heavy, but that's what we read a couple times back to on hours right about. yeah and that's a big responsibility you think about that everybody focuses on the wife and having to submit to her husband that's a small part when you read the what the responsibilities of a husband in that chapter that's a lot there mm -hmm. that's a lot of weight and i think well because god has given the man the headship of the house and that means the responsibility lies with him it's it's a tough thing whether your marriage succeeds or fails you're the leader as the man of the house you're the leader and that's your responsibility and that's really difficult ladies if you if you could just think for a minute that you are um you know you're a make or break component in that really yeah absolutely. like helping him could you imagine having to love someone as christ loves the church that's it's a tall order yeah let's help him out <laughs> well and I, i'm going to give you guys a little secret um and now you guys the men aren't going to like this the ladies when i say this you're going to be like yeah we know but it needs to be said anyway let's hear it men have fragile egos mm. and they need to be built up by their wife i need to work on that part and it is true it, it if you look at some really, and when I say successful men, I'm not talking about, because usually men that are successful in business are awful with their family, and I call that a failure. But you look at the men that are successful in, in their life, with their family, in their business, whatever that is, it's because they have a wife that supports them mm. and builds them up, and that's mm -hmm. what makes makes a man a man really it's it's that and that's where god said the wife is to be a help me to her husband and that's what what it means is be that help me be that support and that doesn't mean you can't have your opinion it doesn't mean you become a servant or a doormat it means you find out where your husband is and you find out where you can help him and be that help me and build him up now, you might be saying, well, th what does that do for me? Well, as you build him up, you're going to be built up as well. Mm -hmm. And that's part of that giving of yourself. And then, so for the husbands to love his wife, he's got to be willing to give of, of himself and sacrifice. And he needs you to be that support and that help me and build him up. Mm -hmm. So as you both do that, work towards do what God has called you to do, you both win. Simple. It's simple. Not always easy, but it's simple. All right. Until the next time. I don't have a good saying to end on. <laughs> I was Sorry thinking of one. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, I get to do the quip. You get to do the closing. Okay. I get to do the quip. You can close, but I'll. All right. Go for it. Behind every great man is the drawer the woman needs to get into. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Words to live by right there. All righty. This has been Bible Time with Larry and Pam. And next week, we're going to get back into some more Bible doctrines. I keep saying next week. Next episode, we're going to get more into the Bible doctrine. So, And if you do have any comments you like, we really appreciate it. You can put it in the comment section. You can email us. And those that have our phone number, call us. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and We'd if you have any ideas. Like for and subscribe. Content. If you have any ideas, tell your friends. We really want to build this up because we, we feel like we have a message that people need to hear. So And so do you. So share with us yeah. so that we can share with others. Absolutely. 
Till next time. See you then. Bye.